The G7 Hiroshima Summit was held from May 19 to 21, 2023. Here is a report on the G7 Hiroshima Summit and other news from the day of the summit. The G7 Summit in Hiroshima opened in the rain, with Prime Minister Kishida welcoming the heads of state and government at Peace Park. G7 leaders, including the three nuclear weapon states, the United States, France, and the United Kingdom, gathered in the formerly atomic bomb-stricken city. After visiting the Hiroshima Peace Museum for about 40 minutes, they met Keiko Ogura, a survivor of the bombing. After the meeting, Keiko stated, I am very relieved and happy that everyone listened to my story so seriously. This is a true story, different from those you only see in books. By reliving those moments, I could also smell the smell of that day. During my story, I told everyone to try to smell it as well, and I think they succeeded. In other words, I believe that Hiroshima has a deep and real meaning and is not just a representative image, and the fact that years ago the bombing happened here will move their hearts. What did the leaders feel when they laid flowers at the atomic bomb victim cenotaph? Let's look at the notes written by the leaders at the Atomic Bomb Museum. U.S. President Biden wrote, May the stories of this museum remind us all of our obligations to build a future of peace. Together let us continue to make progress toward the day when we can finally and forever rid the world of nuclear weapons. Keep the faith. French President Macron wrote, It is our sole duty and responsibility to remember the Hiroshima victims and act for peace. UK Prime Minister Sunak wrote, Shakespeare tells us to give sorrow words. Yet language fails in the light of the bomb's flash. No words can describe the horror and suffering of the people of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. But what we can say, with all our hearts and all our souls, is no more. Sessions on the first day focused on the global economy. At the same time, Ukraine, one of the critical topics of the summit, was discussed and it was decided to expand the scope of export restrictions to Russia to all items critical to aggression, to prevent the circumvention of sanctions. Also of importance are nuclear disarmament and non-proliferation, which are on the summit agenda for the first time. An independent paper on nuclear disarmament, the Hiroshima Vision, was also presented. Japanese Prime Minister Kishida commented, I consider this document to be of historical importance as it strongly demonstrates the determination of the G7 leaders to achieve a, a nuclear weapons-free world, their concrete agreement, and their future priorities and directions. The document stresses the importance of the 77-year non-use of nuclear weapons and reiterates that Russia's threat, much less the use of nuclear weapons, is unacceptable. In addition, this paper calls for the publication of objective data on nuclear capabilities, keeping China's situation in mind. On the other hand, regarding the G7 security policy, the G7 effectively affirmed nuclear deterrence, arguing that its nuclear weapons play a defense role as long as they exist. During the second day's session, participants discussed the topic of economic security. They agreed to launch a new framework and strengthen cooperation to counter economic coercion to pressure trading partners, keeping China's situation in mind. The group also discussed that a Global South issue, including strengthening its involvement in emerging and developing economies. On the same day, an expanded meeting attended by the heads of state and government of the eight non-G7 countries invited to the summit was held, exchanging views on global issues such as climate change and energy. In the afternoon, Ukrainian President Zelensky landed at Hiroshima Airport around 3.30 p.m., bringing the eyes of the world to the city of Hiroshima, which was hit by the atomic bomb in the past. In this context, the conference's final day took place. Early in the morning, South Korean President Yoon visited the cenotaph of Korean victims of the atomic bombing located in Peace Park together, with Prime Minister Kishida. This was the first time that the leaders of Japan and South Korea visited the cenotaph together, and during the subsequent summit meeting, both leaders stressed the importance of this visit. Prime Minister Kishida commented, I believe this was a significant event in Japan-South Korea relations and our prayers for world peace. President Yoon commented, I believe today's joint visit to Hiroshima will be remembered by all as a courageous act by the Prime Minister to prepare for a peaceful future and to commemorate the Korean victims of the atomic bomb. 
A Korean atomic bomb survivor living in Hiroshima said, I am really happy that I have lived long enough. It has been said that Japan and South Korea have always been neighboring countries and far away at the same time, but today I feel our closeness very much. Afterward, leaders of invited countries, including India, a nuclear weapon state, and heads of international organizations visited the Peace Park, experiencing the reality of atomic bombing up close. The Hiroshima summit concluded with a peace and stability discussions with President Zelensky and the other invited countries. Prime Minister Kishida, who chaired the summit, gathered in Peace Park and opened the summit by expressing his desire to hold the summit in Japan in the city of Hiroshima, which was hit by the atomic bomb. Prime Minister Kishida said, We are all citizens of Hiroshima. When all the world's 8 billion people become citizens of Hiroshima, nuclear weapons will be eliminated from the earth. I believe in this. That is why I have asked the world's leaders to gather here in Hiroshima this time. We will not use nuclear weapons. We will not threaten with nuclear weapons. Now we have to ask ourselves this fundamental question concerning the survival of the human race. He also reiterated the significance of the independent document, Hiroshima Vision, presented at the summit. We agreed on the importance of not using nuclear weapons for 77 years, and confirmed that there are no winners in nuclear war and that nuclear war should never be fought. We believe it is historically significant that G7 leaders, who have visited bomb cities, listened to the voices of atomic bomb survivors, and directly experienced the reality of atomic bombing and people's aspirations for peace, would make such a statement. He also emphasized the achievement of G7 unity in the face of Russia's continued aggression against Ukraine, commenting, I consider it significant that we were able to show the unwavering world solidarity with the G7 and a renewed determination to uphold a free and open international order based on the rule of law 